All right, we got a great show for you today. We're looking at the top 10 wide receivers. And make sure you subscribe, click the bell, and be ready for your fantasy football leagues this year. Oh, Hard Knocks starts today. Teams are on the field. Fantasy football's kicking into high gear. And if you're not ready yet, you've got to go to ultimatedraftkit.com to get the best draft kit in the world. This is Melvin Gore, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, oh, welcome in. Oh, it's hard knocks time. Oh, oh, very nice. Had a little fancy <laughs> with that one. Welcome into the show. Was it a crooner? That's what they used to be called. The crooner voice? Yeah, where they didn't really sing, they just kind of talk. Da, 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 da. I'm headed out the door. <laughs> like, what? You're not singing. You're, <laughs> you're just talking. You're just crooning. <laughs> ah, bah, 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 boo. Tuesday, August 11th. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Andy, Mike, and Jason. Hard Knocks is tonight, eh? That's, that's what they say. Well, that'd be fun. Get some inside information, see how it's going inside these facilities. I'm excited. Yeah, some masks, some face shields. Some face shields. <laughs> uh, we have a wide receiver show today. Top 10 wide receivers. Our consensus rankings, walking through them on today's episode. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Jason said it at the top. The Ultimate Draft Kit available now at ultimatedraftkit.com. And I would encourage you to check out the website. The fantasyfootballers.com. We just launched some very wonderful player profiles, mm -hmm. which have athletic uh, metrics, speed score. You can go stare at uh, Mike is on Antonio Gibson's page for three or four hours a day. How did you know that? I've got uh, Google Analytics. <laughs> I can see your IP address. Sources. I can see your IP address. Just you, you pivot, you alt tab between that and Blake just, Jarwin's profile. I just keep refreshing it so it will be the most popular. Now Blake Jarwin, Antonio Gibson, very similar athletic profiles according to. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the Jarwin's. Oh, oh no! Jarwin's a gigantic human being, yeah. but but Gibson is very athletic. This is a slightly different uh, <laughs> profile. All right, quick question of the day. Brooks would like us to name a player or situation that we'll be annoyed to talk about throughout the 2020 fantasy season. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I'm going to be so very happy to talk about everything. Look, I'll talk about it all a hundred times. I don't care. This season is different. Nothing's getting me down. I'm riding high, fellas. Give me the NFL. Hey, that... That's, that's the, the best, right answer. That's the right answer because I'm manufacturing. I, I'm thinking, what do I not want to talk about? I want to talk about it all. You're a hundred. I want to be annoyed talking about Baker Mayfield again. Let's go. I, I want to be annoyed talking about the Washington football yeah, team. Exactly. I, I want to be annoyed hearing Andy talk about AJ Green. <laughs> like I want. <laughs> let's bring it on. <laughs> My situation, though, uh, to manufacture an answer for this question would be the Detroit uh, backfield situation because, I, the, I mean, there's no winning. There's literally no way it goes well for me, right? Because correct. if Detroit just stinks, which is what I'm projecting as far as a running game, then This was your answer for last year as well. <laughs> then, then it's not, you know, it's like, oh, this is not fun. It's not good for fantasy. Let's say DeAndre Swift, a player that... Um, all three of us loved going into the draft. Andy's mm -hmm. number one guy. My number three he was it's extremely talented. He breaks out. Well, guess what I'm going to get? <laughs> guess what I'm going to oh, get? Oh, we know. All the carry on Johnson love from yesteryear uh, being usurped. But carry on yes. let's say carry on does it. I'm not going to enjoy that. Guess how many shares of carry on Johnson I'll have this oh, year. Oh, stop. You won't enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Like, you no, okay, I would love it. You'll be victory lapping every touchdown he scores. But I don't I don't actually I mean I, I would draft Swift ahead of carry on right now. So that's why I would be upset by it. But you're right. The best situation here 
it just isn't going to happen, though. <laughs> so that's... Oh, oh, no, it's sad. Oh, but true. News and notes from around the league. Pick one, Jason. Pick one of Carry the- on Johnson, either he returns... Uh, well, I mean, he, I guess not returns to, but establishes yeah. himself, surprisingly. Or Rodney Anderson makes oh. the team. <laughs> oh man, I, I I would have I would have to pick Carry on in that situation. Okay. But I am very excited for Rodney Anderson. <laughs> should at least two injuries ahead of him on the depth chart happen? Okay, the Patriots have signed running back Lamar Miller, formerly of the Texans, to a one-year contract. We were remembering somehow. It was just a year ago when Andrew Luck retired. On the same day, Lamar Miller tore his ACL and MCL during preseason. So he is back. This throws even more question marks into the backfield in New England. And the latest report we have on Sony Michelle is that they just don't know if he'll be ready to go to start camp. And Brandon Bolden opted out. And so they needed some depth at the running back position. What utilization do you expect from Lamar Miller in this offense? Is this Sony Michelle insurance? Yeah, that's what I, I believe this is. This is the veteran you signed before the NFL draft. This is you know the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers or the you know the 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 Washington football team going out and getting uh, Peyton Barber and right. saying we don't know who we're going to get in the draft, but we have to have someone. This is the opposite. They don't know who they're going to have. In the season, they need need someone there. I don't expect Lamar Miller to usurp or become the number one, you know, the number one player in this backfield. However, I wouldn't doubt that he is actually the best. Yeah. Uh, so should Sony start the season on the pup, maybe he does get a chance and p- plays well with Cam uh, behind him. Uh, you know, but I'm, I don't think I'm signing or drafting. Uh, Anyone in this backfield. No Lamar Miller or Sonny Michelle stacks for any of your rosters? Oh, I want to lock that backfield up. <laughs> no, gonna, none You're going to have me. to grab James White and Rex Burkhead and Damian it, Harris. And yeah, in a PPR league, I'm going 0RB James White. That's the running sure. back I would take from this team. I agree. This is all with Sonny Michelle's health. But, look, Lamar Miller should be healthy. You know, we always were talking about, like, Preston Williams, maybe somehow Preston Williams is back from his ACL tear. That happened in like November. I mean, Lamar Miller's was last preseason. He he should be back now. We know sometimes you know it was ACL and MCL. Yeah, a, a larger injury, but saying that you know sometimes it takes these players a, a while once they're on the field to actually be back. But the last time we saw Lamar Miller. He was actually pretty good for the Houston Texans. He would have had a thousand yard season, but he did miss a couple games. I, I, I think he's I, toast. I, I don't know, but 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 based off what? Just saying because he's older and has the injury. Yeah, I mean, like AJ Green or <laughs> wait, who are we talking about? AJ <laughs> Green is on the field playing right now. Oh, I mean, okay, Lamar Miller. Well, Lamar Miller's the, the, about the, to there be. There wasn't demand for him until now, and Lamar Miller's older. And I think he, I mean, it's insurance, like you said. But my, what I'm saying that is weeks, week six, I'm not projecting this, but with Jason, I, I would not be shocked to see Lamar Miller is actually ends up being the lead running back for this team. I, I will. Sony I will. has been bad. Yeah, I, I would, I would agree with that. I would add to it that this also says they don't love what they have in Damian Harris. Yeah. There's all the, oh, maybe Damian Harris who, you know, was on the team last year. You wouldn't know when it. He was getting some hype. He like got three about days ago. seven snaps, you know, in his rookie season. They still feel like they need more because they don't think he's the answer. Yeah, and they do run the football. I mean, even Sony Michelle, who somehow finishes the 28th running back last year, almost 18 carries in all of their victories. That's how, that's the formulation that is going to work. We'll see Cam getting in there. And, um, okay, Lamar Miller added to the mix. T.Y. Hilton expected to be back out on the field in a couple of days. Uh, and Alvin Kamara, I, not a lot of specificity here, Alvin, but he, he said he, quote, tore his knee. Okay. So it, something look, happened. That, it sounds bad. In week That's, six. I don't I'd, want to tear my knee. I would prefer not to. No. Uh, I don't know what that ends up 
meaning, but he says he was dealing with it the whole season. He did not have surgery. He's been uh, just recovering, rehabbing, working out, and now he's back. So I mean, we knew something was wrong. I mean, he, he, he just didn't look right. He came back after the you know he got injured in week six, missed two games, came back, played the entire rest of the season, and had you know was on pace for two hundred and eighty six opportunities. He, he he was he was good for fantasy. He just didn't have enough touchdowns during that stretch. So I'm not worried about the knee he injured before we saw him play. Well, and when we were watching a lot last year, I mean, he was one of the guys that uh, you watched him try to get to the edge in some of these games after the injury, and you were like. It doesn't quite look like Alvin Kamara, you know. Not super. No, no, regular. Yeah. Normal size, no mushroom. Mm. Uh, any other news you guys? got him. What, yeah. Any, <laughs> any other? <laughs> that's what tore his knee means, Mike. Any other news that you guys want to discuss, talk about? We have one month from the NFL kickoff. One month away. Yes, very Hard, hard knocks kicking it off. Almost Fantasy tore, drafts getting it. I almost going. tore my knee last but night. Sitting? No, oh. no, amazingly it wasn't sitting. It was a giant jump and fall to the ground. Um, Why are you doing that? You're you, almost you you're jump almost out of 50 out of what? Years old. So, out right. of a chair? That's out of not true. Off the you're sofa? almost 40. Sorry, um, that's what I meant. No, so here's here's I'm on the way to my garage. I'm taking something into my garage. I open He's on a journey to the garage. I'm, oh, I'm on a journey and I open the garage door and as I open it holding this box um something scurries in very fast into the house into the house right at my feet something scurries into your house <laughs> just <laughs> beelines for my feet and i am screaming yeah i can see this and then i <laughs> jump and i land on my knees and i'm running back to the couch where hold on hold on to be clear you're holding a box yeah it, you were startled yeah. you your reaction was to jump into the <laughs> air and land on your knees? Well, it wasn't. Did it, you hold the box the whole time? No, the box was Did gone. Did you land on this your knees? I mean, the box was an empty. I was taking it out to recycle. Oh, like, this is, okay, okay. I didn't okay. care about that. But it, it, this was not a planned um, and choreographed move. This was more of a, oh, no, I'm about to die. Anyway, so I go back to the- Just to be clear, you landed on your feet or you landed on your knees? One knee, one foot. So was, you went down? I went down. Okay. Sack of potatoes down. And but did it look like the superhero landing? No. No, <laughs> those are cool. Um, so I run back to the couch where my wife is, and she's worried. I'm worried. I'm like, I think a rat just came in. Ooh. Anyways, we spend about 45 seconds trying to get the- I literally was standing on my couch at this point. Anyways, I, I finally work my way back over to the garage door to try to look and see what happens. It was, it was, a, it was a wrapper. <laughs> it, was a, it was a wrapper that was left on the ground in, in my garage. And when I opened and the it door, blew it blew in. It was a M&M ice cream cookie wrapper uh, from one of my children. So I injured myself oh. and made a fool of myself because that of a wrapper. Is excellent and also reminds me. You got to spray for those wrappers. Yeah. So we we have another podcast called the Spit Bars Podcast, and we often do funny drafts. And we were drafting a fight fighting items from a pet store, and I took rats. Yes. And I was mocked relentlessly by Jason. Yes, you, you were. And apparently it took one rat to send him to the couch. It, wa it was a rapper. I'm not <laughs> afraid of rats. I'm afraid of rappers. <laughs> Rap <laughs> well, uh, oh. you never cease to surprise us, Jason. Yeah. I mean, you are very special. It was embarrassing. <laughs> it was an Eminem ice cream rapper. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, I hope you uh, recover. I hope you can get back to true form like Alvin Kamara. The Kamen. knee's healing up. That's good. That's good. Just don't sit anywhere and you'll be fine. <laughs> wide receivers. All right. Top 10 wide receiver episode looking at our consensus wide receiver rankings. And right at the top, tippy top, big surprise here, shocker, Michael Thomas. All of our number one overall wide receiver after he broke the NFL reception record, 149 for 17, 25, and 9 on 185 targets. So he was thrown to twice per play. That's what that equates to yeah, for basically. me. But just uh, just obviously an incredible player. And uh, any reason for us to think that 
not more of the same for Michael Thomas yeah, in 2020. I think so. Um, and don't hear what I'm not saying. He's my number one wide receiver as well. But I don't feel conf- like, you know, we talked about what's the percentage chance that CMC is the is the running back. one. What's the percentage chance that Michael Thomas is the wide receiver one at the end of the year? I put it at like 11%. Yeah, I'd say maybe, it, maybe about a quarter, probably. 15% for me. Yeah, I mean. Michael Thomas came into the league and was great. Rookie year, he was yeah. a top 10 wide receiver. He's been phenomenal, breaking catch percentage records every year. He is one of, if not the best wide receiver in the National Football League. He's locked in. But last year, his number one finish was absurd. Uh, I mean, the amount of targets that he got, you, you look at most players in yeah, the league. Like Andy said, he broke the single season reception record. Yes, you 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 say okay this guy's a dominant one so he's going to get 140 plus targets right like like yeah. michael thomas got the two previous seasons 149 147 last year he had 185 targets now they add emmanuel sanders i don't think he is going to repeat at a number up there i think it's going to be far more closer to 150 targets which again that's awesome I would love that. And he's you know how many he's going to catch from 150 targets? 151. Somehow he will catch more than the amount of times the ball's been thrown to him. But I don't think that we'll see the level of wide receiver one tier that he was last season. He, uh, by the way, kind of a crazy stat for how good he was last year. Never finished number one on any given week. He was just, you know, two, three, mind-blowingly consistent. When Marvin Harrison broke the receiving record, he did it on 205 targets, dropped down to 142 the next year. Wasn't any less Marvin Harrison. And Michael Thomas won't be any less Michael Thomas. The targets will probably come down. Um, you always have a chance in an offense this good to put up better touchdown totals. I mean, nine touchdowns is not some outlandish number. It wasn't the backbone of his fantasy season. So he could easily do, do that or end up in the 11, 12 range. Um, yeah. I mean, the real question with Michael Thomas is more related to when you're in the draft and you're deciding between the very difficult to find consistent running back options or going with the Michael Thomas, is he priced right now in a place where he has to repeat to get the value? Yeah. I mean, right now he's in consideration at the four is often picked at the five or six, all of those spots. I'm taking a running back personally. Um, you know, it, it might change if I'm in a three wide receiver full PPR league, then obviously the depth is going to matter and the, the range of wide receivers that I'll start will 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 shift. Uh, but in your normal leagues, I'm I'm going running back probably for the first seven or so. I wanted to test that for you. So running back or Michael Thomas, Kenyon Drake or Thomas. Yeah, that I knew you were going to go right to that name. Oh, I, I, I thought that was an easy. You, I did. You too. would take Drake. I was uh, trying to warm up to the line. <laughs> No, I, I I think the I think the line bullseye. Is, so I think the line is too earlier than that. Uh, I would take Michael Thomas over Kenyon Drake and Miles Sanders. Okay, uh, but if it comes to the the big three, Alvin Kamara, Dalvin Cook, and Clyde Edwards Alaire, I will I will draft them all over Michael Thomas. Devontae Adams comes in at number two on our top ten wide receiver list. He's three on my uh, my rankings and Jason's two on Mike's in twelve games last year. Eighty three for nine ninety seven and five. On 127 targets, and again, that's only in 12 games played, including a couple games where he's kind of beat up. So coming into the season, I think the the biggest question mark is the identity of the Green Bay Packers. Last year, it was found in Aaron Jones in the running game, and you had uh, you know disappearing acts in the passing offense at times. You also don't have a lot of help for Devonte Adams. Correct. On the other side of the field, you can you can be enthusiastic about Alan Lazard. He looks like he's going to be the two. They lost Devin Funchess. They had picked him up as an off-season acquisition. Mm -hmm. He opted out. And they didn't invest draft capital. They went with the old quarterback in the first round routine. And another running back. And another running back in the second instead of, uh, you know, more weapons mm -hmm. for Aaron Rodgers. So, you know, Devontae Adams is going to be a target monster. Uh, what are you looking at when you look at this season, the ceiling and the floor for Devontae Adams? He hasn't played a full season since 2016. Sure, he he has some risk. I mean, we had, if you remember, a uh, couple years ago, you had that devastating uh, head injury when they were when he was playing against the Chicago Bears. So he oh, yeah. Adams does carry risk, but I love Devontae Adams. Like he is a truly elite wide receiver, which 
is amazing that we are here calling Devonte Adams elite compared to where he started in the NFL. It looked like he was going to be just a, an absolute bust, but he found his way. He's elite. He's a great route runner. He finds himself open. He's a target hog. In games played last year, you're talking 30-plus percent of the targets. Those are elite. Those are Michael Thomas. Those are DeAndre Hopkins type of a, of a target share. Almost hit 1,000 yards despite the 12 games. And it, the story for Devonta Adams last year, where which he was still good when he was playing, was it was the touchdowns. You know, in 12 games, only five touchdowns. He was coming off of three straight years with double-digit touchdown receptions, which I expect him to be back to. Like he's he's one of those guys where you can make the easy bet of should Will Adams over under nine and a half touchdowns. Now, like, oh, I'm going to take the over. Yeah, so that's why I like him. That's why he's my number two. I thought a, an interesting stat on Devontae Adams um, over the last two seasons this is from Pro Football Focus. 12% of his targets have been contested. It just tells you how open, he's open yeah. Devontae Adams is. Any concerns with the snap percentage dip last year? Uh, he was at the 84, 74, uh, 89% and playing, dropped to 63%. Playing through injury. Playing hurt. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, he is truly, he's a guy that's going to be up in the 170 plus target range. There's there's not many. And it's coming from a Hall of Famer who trusts no one else on the field. You've got the red zone prowess, the fact that he was the, you know, he was the wide receiver three two years ago. Last year, he was great when he was playing. Yeah. Fifth, he was in, fifth in points per game last year. So I, I'm I'm all about the Devonte Adams life. Yeah, and hopefully he can stay healthy for a full season and yes. turn in that 170 plus targets. Julio Jones comes in at number three. He's number two on my board. Four for Jason, three for Mike. Uh, right now being drafted in the second round as the wide receiver five off the board. So we all actually have him um, higher at the wide receiver position than others. Uh, a pillar of consistency throughout his entire career. Fantasy finishes since 2014. Eighth, second, sixth, fifth, fifth, third. Mm -hmm. And I know... I didn't hear any number ones. Andy. No, you didn't. And, uh, <laughs> what a loser. What's, what's crazy is you kind of look at it, and I know that we have the, the meme in our heads of Julio Jones limping off the field. Yeah. 15, 16, 14, 16, 16, 15 games played. He is, at, you know, snap percentages staying similar. He is just as automatic as it gets at the wide receiver position. If you talk about gambling in the, you know, second round on a running back that you think has upside, or you stare down Julio Jones and you know the output for Julio Jones will be right. what it's been, what do you do as a, you know, Jason, you're a risk averse, you know, first, second, third round type of player. You want to guarantee what you got in those spots because you miss in the first, second round. You really set your team back. Then you got a hit at, at the lower probability rounds. How do you view Julio Jones? Are you ending up with him in any I am drafts? ending up with him often if I am at the top of the first round in the first few picks because I, I'm, I'm running back heavy usually in those first couple rounds. We talked about this yesterday. I don't want those round three, four, five running backs, and I do want those wide receivers. So usually I end up with running back, running back. But when I'm near the top of the draft and I've got a stud running back and Julio falls to me at the back of the second, which I've had happen uh, plenty of times. He's older. You know, he's he's I never been the number one. fatigue, he's too. Just a fa yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's just more people are used to seeing him there, and you've got other players that are a little bit more exciting. And it's one of those things because he's not the touchdown machine that, mm. you know, Devontae Julio Adams, touchdown Jones was a good who, dude. <laughs> it was a, it was a fun short stretch. <laughs> Julio touchdown Jones. Uh, you know, he, he's not one of those guys that I would say is going to be the number one, like his we've seen over the career, but he is, his floor is so high. If you're in any kind of PPR league, he just dominates week in and week out. And that's who I want as my wide receiver one. I, I'm i going to go on record. This is the year. That he gets number one? Double-digit touchdowns. Oh. For, for Julio Jones. Well, then he's the – look, if Julio Jones – He's been wanting to try that since 2011. If, if he hits 10 touchdowns, Julio Jones is the number one wide receiver. It, I would agree with that. It's time. It's time. I would like that very much, Julio. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, before we move on to the rest of the list, want to thank today's sponsor, Pristine Auction. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, you know about Pristine Auction, the best sports memorabilia site 
on the planet. This is where I got my signed Blake Jarwin jersey that <laughs> that I was able to unleash you on You can't Andy. find that just anywhere. We got Devontae Adams up on our wall right now. They make incredible gifts, very unique gifts for the sports fans in your life, and you get fantastic deals. These are all auctioned recently. A signed DJ Moore jersey for just $71. A signed Calvin Ridley. Could he break out? Well, they didn't have to break the bank for this signed jersey. Only oh, $70. Nice. Look, go to pristineauction.com. You make a completely free account. You only pay for what you win. None of this BS you yeah, pay to bid. To bid or anything. So make a completely free account. Check it out and use the code BALLERS, uh, and you're going to get a $10 credit for your first purchase. All right, we're going to move on to number four on our rankings, and that is Tyreek Hill. Mm. Tyreek Hill is number four. Last season, injuries slowed him down considerably, coming off of the number one overall fantasy finish in 2018, a number four finish in 2017. He is being drafted as the wide receiver three right now, so he's getting all of the respect due a world champion. Um, so I have a little bit of a game to play, though, with Tyreek Hill that I think you will find I like games. Intriguing. Okay. And, I'm in. And so it's going to beg a few questions from you. But we're gonna play we're gonna play a game called Oh no. Called Tyreek Hill. Uh huh. Or Stefan Diggs. Oh Ooh, I like it already. Me. Oh okay. no. Oh no. <laughs> now this is numbers from the twenty eighteen and twenty nineteen seasons. Okay. And just to throw it out there, missed games, uh who led the way between those two seasons and missed games. We'll start with that. Tyreek Hill so you know. missed two games. I think in it, that I think stretch, it's Diggs think. two years ago. I mean, Diggs always misses games. He was yeah. pretty good this year. It's so. actually Tyreek. Tyreek's missed. Oh no! Tyreek's missed four. Diggs has missed two. But I'm, I wanted you to know that when ah, I give all these other stats. Okay. Um, let's start with touchdowns. Touchdowns. Tyreek Hill or Stephon Diggs over the last two seasons, 2018 and 2019. Oh my goodness. Also, having never <laughs> been on this side of these games, this is wonderful. Watching, <laughs> watching your faces. Because right. you don't know whether I'm trying no, to get you I or don't. not. I curses. I, Tyreek Hill was phenomenal two years ago. Double digit touchdowns. I'm going to go Tyreek. I'm going to go Tyreek. You are both correct. Tyreek oh. Hill, 19 <laughs> touchdowns yes. in, uh, over the last two years, but Stephon Diggs, 15. Okay, 19, Na 19, 19 to 15. 15. Okay, yeah, not bad. all right. 100 yard games. Tyreek Hill or Stephon Diggs. 100 yard mm. games over the last two years. Man. That's tough. I I'll go. I'll take Diggs. I'm gonna there. go Diggs as well because he's so hot and cold. Oh, just the uh, Tyreek was hurt. You are correct. Stephon Diggs nine oh, hundred yard games. These games are easy. Eight, <laughs> well, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Eight hundred yard games for Tyreek. So nine to eight. Diggs wins. How oh, about barely? This? Let's go this way. <laughs> Top thirty six weeks. So this is a pretty important mm. statistic top 36 dropping weeks. into 36 all top right 36 weeks over the last two years this is a gotcha so i gotta go digs yeah i lean because Diggs. because i think everybody listening i mean the, the fact that where you're drafting hill and where you're drafting Diggs says well of course that has to be tyreek hill they are tied 17 oh, I told you it was a gotcha. 17 <laughs> top 36 weeks from each player last one top six weeks so finishing oh. inside the top six, Tyreek. Oh man, when, when well, I, I like goes it going hot, to six. <laughs> when Diggs goes hot, he goes. I I would have to go Tyreek. It would be disingenuous to actually say Diggs. Uh. It is Tyreek. Okay, woo. But, all right. But just to point it out, it's mm. eight to seven on top six weeks over that two year span. And the only reason I'm bringing this up is not to but, necessarily. Oh, oh boy. But Andy. Oh boy. I'm confused. <laughs> Are you saying that? That Diggs is better than he's being uh, drafted, or that Tyree Kill is <laughs> worse than he's being drafted. I'm gonna give you one more to answer that question, voice of public opinion. Thank you. Bust games over the last two years. So these are games where they actually go out and hurt your fantasy team. So I had my my stat ready was that over the last two years, Tyree Kill has busted in forty percent of his games. <laughs> Now that and look that there was a long run this year when he came back from his injury and the defense was great for Kansas City so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna use my stat to my advantage I'm gonna guess Tyreek I agree with Mike <laughs> <laughs> it's actually Stephon Diggs oh you got me <laughs> thirteen Dang it. but thirteen to eleven very close yeah. on bus games everybody views 
Stephon Diggs through the lens of you don't know what you're going to get. Yet with these, over the last two years, Tyreek is not far off, yet is drafted right. ridiculously different. So all that to say, Tyreek is, you're not getting Michael Thomas. You're not getting Devontae Adams. You're not getting Julio Jones with Tyreek Hill. You are getting a player that is going to potentially win you a week outright because he goes absolutely crazy, but he can disappear. Yeah, you are not getting the engine to the car. You are, but you're getting the NOS. There you go. And Press that look, button. I want it. Yes, I, I want Tyreek Hill in my lineup, but I, I he can't. Even though we you, you project him here, it's it's like the uh, also the Amari Cooper syndrome where yeah, at the end of the year, total points. Yeah, he's a wide receiver one. But if you were saying, wow, oh, this is my guy. This is my wide receiver one. You know, they they can't cost you that many weeks. So the year while he he's, was, he's number six for me, he's number six for Andy. I can't imagine taking him over Julio him. Jones. I can't imagine right. taking him over Devontae Which Adams. Which Jason has him ranked over yes. Julio Jones. Is that is that still accurate? So, well, the ranking, like you said, it's at the end of the year. Who has more fantasy points? Tyreek Hill, I think, has a higher ceiling because of the touchdowns. But this is why when you look at tiers and you look at the rankings and the blurbs and the UDK and you, you see the risk rating and all of those things, you say, well, no, I'm going to draft Julio ahead of Tyreek because that fits my team better. I do want to give a little bit of context or at least ask the question about specificity because it's been very negative on Tyreek Hill. Um, last year, once, he, you know, that, that midway point, the Kansas City Chiefs defense got way better. Pat Mahomes was injured for a stretch of yes. those games. Yep. He was hobbled. It wasn't the same offense. Right. During that stretch from there to the end of the year, Tyreek Hill was the wide receiver 41. He was terrible. But if you look at the year prior and the first half of last year, Tyreek Hill was worthy of being the number one wide receiver, the number two, three. He yes. was phenomenal. So I think the question that fantasy owners have to at least have their own answer, since we don't know the future, is was the the was the was second half of last year, was that the new normal for the Chiefs for Tyreek Hill, or was that the injury of Tyreek Hill mixed with the injury of Pat Mahomes mixed with the hot streak of the defense, and and that is the outlier. What 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 would be each of one of your answers to that question? Well, I, I certainly don't think weeks 11 through 17 are prescriptive for Tyreek Hill at all in any way, shape, or form. He is simply a less consistent player. Even when he was number one overall in fantasy, he was the 15th most consistent wide receiver. Mm -hmm. That is, And he's also going to have to be your first pick. If you want Tyreek Hill, he's going to be your first pick in the draft, barring, you know, Getting lucky and him second. sliding. Yeah, you can get him in the, in the second round, but I, his ADP is at one ten right now. So, oh my goodness, there's a chance that he slides to the second round. And if you're right. at the turn, he may be your second pick. But right, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the likelihood is you're having to start your team with Tyreek Hill. And I, you know, it's just something to be paying attention to. And it's all about your team identity. What are you going to do with the other picks? Right. Are you going to layer in more players with a lot of upside but a lot of downside? Is it going to be more consistency? These are the type of uh, nuanced decisions your fantasy team has to make. Chris Godwin comes in at number five. Chris Godwin got off to the absolutely insane start last season, finished with a – he missed the last two games, but finished number two overall in fantasy football. He is the uh, the example of the player that got the offseason hype and delivered in every way, shape, and form on mm -hmm. it. Um, second most yards per game last year, 95 yards a game being drafted – at the in the late second right now, not really in association with that finish. People have doubts about whether Brady will be able to do what Winston did. Whether uh, Godwin whether Brady will, be will as, need to do what Winston did. I think right. that's part of the issue. Is Winston's thirty interceptions meant? Hey, we got to keep chucking right. this ball. Twenty four point two fantasy points per game from weeks one through six. That defined his season. He was not as consistent over. The last, basically from the midway point of the season on. So, and we've talked, one of the big principles that you, you notice each and every year, the beginning of the season has such a mental impact on fantasy players. Yeah. So those first six weeks, dominating, number one, oh my gosh, look at this guy I got later in the draft. He's, he's the best wide receiver in football. The back half wasn't as consistent. It wasn't as good. Sure. He's still a great wide receiver, but I think, you know, we have him at seven. Uh, Jason and I, Mike, you got him at four. Yeah, and look, 
I have him at four. That's where my projections landed. It's a scary ranking for a player who has a brand new quarterback. Now, I'm just, you know, projecting of of trying to fit the puzzle pieces together that of, you know, that Chris Godwin is a top notch route runner. People like the general public hasn't caught up on that yet. They they like Chris Godwin. He broke out for fantasy. He was one of the best wide receivers last year, but you know how the the general public is like Keenan Allen. Great route runner. Stephon Diggs, elite route runner. You know, like uh, re- using reception perception in our ultimate draft kit, like Matt Harmon identified Chris Godwin as someone who's going to become an elite route runner, but when he was being drafted, like that's. Yeah, in the NFL draft, he was one of his absolute favorite players. A lot of that as well because of contested catches, both of those things. Yeah, and that's where we are. Like, look at his, uh, Chris Godwin's success running routes, and especially. You know, he crushes the dig and the slant route. That's that's called the Tom Brady special. I'm telling you, I I'm gonna I'm gonna come clean. I am starting to get a little bit more behind Tom Brady in general oh, as a okay. fantasy option and this offense and the belief that it will be a passing offense. It will be oriented towards letting Tom Brady flex his muscles with Gronkowski, Godwin, and Evans as often as he wants to. Brady didn't leave his sixth championship New England Patriots team <laughs> yeah. to go and be a game manager Correct. somewhere else. He ha- he wants to prove a point that he's that it, look, the GOAT. It's narrative-y, but I'll, I, look, man, I buy it. I buy it. Look, you're right. Tom Brady does not leave New England without like a back pocket full of spite. Yeah, he's he's got something to prove. I mean, that team with that defense, they were 8-0. They were on the way towards the Super Bowl. It's not like he couldn't have won with the Patriots. He wants to be an offensive and, machine this And year. the weapons are, are just so different this yeah. year for him. And the, the thing is, is nothing that I've said about Brady earlier in the offseason is not true. When it goes away, it goes away quickly. It's At gone. this age, it's gone. I mean, it happened to Peyton Manning. But there is the other side. If it's not gone, it could be great. Mm-hmm. So I sure. think that I think Godwin is probably he's probably being, being drafted in the right spot, wide receiver six, seven. Yes, you you should have a little bit of concern when you're drafting Chris Godwin. And if it seems like now I'm feeling like maybe we're being a little negative about some of these players. Understand these are all our top ten wide receivers. The only thing you can really point out are question are marks that might differentiate them between somebody else. I, he's my number four receiver. Yeah, you hate him. <laughs> All That's right, what I heard. number six, Kenny G. Oh, so smooth. Mm. Kenny Galladay. Oh my! When it's Kenny's turn, you let it play a little longer. That's right. And let me tell you a little bit, ba 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 boo, about Kenny Galladay. Uh, David Kenny. Blau. <laughs> like Kenny Galladay, uh, he already had the size. He already had the the build, the athletic profile to be a uh, superstar NFL wide receiver. And you kind of, you were seeing those flashes in his first few years. And uh, I'm going to, again, I'm going to refer to the route running. He had a major improvement in his reception perception scores of, he is now turning from a guy who, who could rely on just his natural athletic ability and size to someone who is becoming a polished uh, route runner. And that look, if he keeps taking those steps, Kenny Galladay will be elite. Daryl Bevel, the OC, he just recently had a uh, interview, and they look narrative fine, but this is what we got to go off of. Bevel said, I want Kenny Galladay to be mentioned with DeAndre Hopkins, with Michael Thomas. That's what he wants, and he's, he's the one who will help turn Kenny Galladay course, into that. But, I mean, of course he does. Is there, is there any... Is there any offensive coordinator in the league that doesn't want his wide receiver one to be mentioned with the greatest but wide receiver one? But they don't. Ones? They don't say it because sometimes it's stupid. You can't to say, say it that. with a straight face for many players. In his situation, Galladay's interesting because he was one of only three players with double digit touchdowns last year. He also doesn't do it on the. You know, it's 116 targets the year before. 119 targets did it with different quarterback play. They started to trust Stafford to be the driver of the offense yes. last year. Um, Kenny Galladay, I have him up at five. Oh, Mike, you do too. Yeah, look, I love Kenny Galladay. I think he man. belongs in that in that uh, group. And his draft position is interesting because if you ended up what with the first pick in the draft, 
you can come back in the third round with Kenny Galladay in a lot of drafts. And I would be very happy to do that. Look, he gets air yards. He gets he gets high volume or high quality targets for fantasy points. He gets end zone targets. He big, gets big plays. He gets big plays. I, I get it. I would love for Kenny Galladay to get 150 targets, but he doesn't have to have that to be a a very consistent wide receiver. One, I I won't have Kenny Galladay change your in mind, any Jason. league. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now now t- trust me. He's so smooth. Um, yeah, I, I, I just, I don't, I, I don't know what it is about. Is it the sixty-five reception? Yes, to I get mean, the number. So statistically, I know what it is. I don't like. You know, we just talked down Tyreek Hill and the consistency factor because you know Tyreek's probably an eighty-five reception guy, uh, but at least he has Pat Mahomes in the highest scoring offense, more touchdown opportunities, even even deeper yards per reception capability than than Galladay, despite the height. Um, you know, Galladay is a player to me that is scary. I believe that Detroit wants to run the ball. I mean, that's clearly what Daryl Bevel would thirtieth year running. They're on. Would they want choose to. to do? That's what they invested in DeAndre Swift. Now, even when I project it, I don't think they're going to be able to. But I do believe that's their desire. I don't think they want Stafford to lead a high power offense because that's that's not what Patricia has ever been. That's not what Daryl Bevel's ever been until this last year where we had an eight game stretch before Stafford got injured where he was amazing. And I think we're just extrapolating too much out of that to say this lion's offense with Stafford and Galladay and, and Marvin Jones is just going to be explosive. And the reality is the difference between Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones is significant is it's major. Go look like Mar. I love Marvin Jones. I mean, he Marvin Jones is the value pick in every single draft, except for the ones where I, end up picking Kenny Galladay in the third round. Marvin Jones is because he can get you a touchdown. He can get you three touchdown weeks, but he's not consistent. Kenny Galladay is the number one. It's it's not I don't have that feeling of projecting going like last year. It was well, Kenny Galladay, I don't know if I want to pay up because could he is he actually the number one or is it one A, one B, they're gonna be going back and forth. Last year to me wrote the story it's Kenny Galladay is elite and he's only getting better last year that wrote the story for you where Marvin Jones got injured in a game and left early and all that Kenny Galladay averaged 13 and a half fantasy points per game Marvin Jones 12 and a half and so yes there is a difference but, but consistency sh- sure my my point is that these are I mean, you can get Marvin Jones in the eighth, ninth round. To, I mean, he nobody wants Marvin Jones, whereas Kenny Galladay, you're paying up. And I just fear that if this is a 65-catch guy who doesn't end up near 10 touchdowns, he's going to disappoint you. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't read much into the points per game piece because it's just Marvin doing his three touchdown thing and then disappearing for seven weeks. But, yeah, I mean, there, there's always more risk, like Jason's saying, with – a 65 touchdown guy it reminds me of Vincent Jackson. You know, Vincent Jackson yes. was, was a monstrous, big play guy, double digit touchdown potential. The question is whether Galladay can take another step forward. I believe he can. Um, I believe this offense will be Matthew Stafford's, uh, much in the way he, it was with Calvin Johnson. He's just the driver. So I'd like to see that. I think that's why we like Stafford at the back of drafts. But 65 receptions moves Galladay Kenny down. Kenny Galladay a could be one of the best wide receivers in the league he has the talent the skill if he was a 140 target type of player a a possession guy as well as a deep threat he would dominate fantasy so that's why I get it I love Kenny Galladay I just I don't think that's his role and I don't enjoy that in in, on my fantasy team all right number seven (laughs) Amari Cooper coming in at number seven you're welcome Mike this is my fault this is my fault. it's also Jason's fault I think it's Mike's fault. I think it's Amari Cooper's fault. Um, it's my fault that he's this low? Yes. <laughs> I have him at four, Jason at six, Mike at 12. Well documented. Probably. Some, somehow I still have him ranked above ADP. This is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, uh, Amari Cooper. I hate myself for it. Weeks one through 10 last year, 94 reception pace, 1,500 yards pace, 13 touchdown pace. Very consistent. 
back half of the year, I we prefer to blot that out. We actually deleted it from the player profile on the website. It just says error code. Oh, you, you guys clearly did with your rankings. That would be uh, fifty nine for seven seventy nine. No, I don't. I don't read too much into the back half of the year. I know Jason doesn't. I think this is one of the best offenses. What about what about uh, when he did it two years ago? For Dallas, he did what, not. What well, the back half of the year when he played two years ago for Dallas, he was a phenomenal. Okay, well, what about the first half of that year? When he played for a different team? Yeah. He wasn't as good. <laughs> I mean, it's just a matter of... This is a flag-planting player. If and, you believe that Amari Cooper can help your fantasy team, you know you believe that he's going to be one of the best in the league. Every year, he's extremely inconsistent. He has half of his games great, half of his games suck. But if you dive deeper, I think there is rationale. And and here's the thing. At the end of this year, it's going to be proven, right? He's either going to have had another inconsistent year and Michael be shirtless running down the street <laughs> with, a, with a cape Look, on flying. To, to be fair, I want Amari Cooper to succeed. I think he can be... A, a top-notch fantasy player. I, I, this is just boy who cried wolf at this point. Yeah, Amari I, Cooper. I, I'm just look. If I if I miss the year that Amari Cooper finally became a season-long league-winning type wide receiver, so be it. Amari Cooper is the reason that Brooks doesn't try anything new on the menu because <laughs> it, there's there's just it's the risk reward factor. If he just take you know Amari Cooper, I got him at four, right? I mean that's pretty high up there. You could take somebody just much more safe for he, consumption he is not a club sandwich he's not a club no. sandwich. oh i love a club sandwich no he's he's the menu item where you go oh they have that here they got craft mac and cheese really they have no something? it's not craft mac it's and a cheese. difficult to make it's a you know it's, it's a, a lava cake you know one of those like very difficult to make desserts where they can be ruined or oh my goodness this is great yeah but i think they've figured out how to cook with amari <laughs> cooper i mm. and See, here's the thing. This is why I say if you if you dig a little deeper, the back half of the year when he was traded to Dallas, he was phenomenal. Then he comes out and is phenomenal. He's the wide receiver three through those first 10 weeks. Gets injured, is hobbled, is on the field as a decoy, sucks, obviously, the rest of the season. And so the question – and then they paid him $100 million. So the question is – Look, people make $100 million mistakes. His ADP That's, is really low. Guys. I have it's him us. really I'll, low. I would – it's I will draft Amari 13. Cooper with this ADP. Yes, I will. I am willing to draft Amari Cooper. The last thing I will say about him is two of the last three years against press coverage, he has finished in the bottom 22%. He cannot get off a jam. You don't want to know what wide receivers can't get off of jams? Cooper Cup, Tyler Boyd, Juju Smith-Schuster, Jamison Crowder. What are What's... What's the common commonality between those four guys? Those are slot wide receivers. Amari Cooper is not a true number one. He is not a true X receiver. May, and honestly, I you hear that, Amari? Oh, like I, it's he's fine. Coming, he's coming for you. Look, the addition of CeeDee Lamb might actually be way better for Amari Cooper because now you have a, a someone else who can run on the outside and you can just keep moving Amari Cooper around, hoping that the that uh that a good cornerback doesn't see him. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, uh, DeAndre Hopkins comes in at number eight. DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. Oh, man. You know what? He's not getting the <sighs> celebration dance bump in our rankings. Yeah. Uh, he is the wide receiver four by ADP. He is eight on our consensus rankings. Eight, five, and 14. That would be me, Jason, and Mike. And that is a pretty big disparity for a player that okay. is finished first, second, and fifth the last three years in Houston. Makes me uh, makes me very sad where I have him ranked. And like uh, Hopkins could he could be installed in Arizona and just be the target machine like he was for Houston. I'm just I just don't see it happening that way. You have an air raid offense where. Like Cliff Kingsbury wants to run five wide receivers out on the field, and when you have five wide receivers out there all the time, you don't force feed a guy thirty percent of your targets. Uh, Rich Rebar did a study on alpha elite wide receivers who changed teams and then had an ADP of being a wide receiver one, and by his calculation, there were six players who have done this in the past ten years. And only one of them actually finished as a wide receiver one. Changing teams. Was it Brandon Marshall? Uh, I believe it was Brandon Marshall. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the one that sticks out. It's hard to do. 
I have had Hopkins in zero drafts. Yeah, I, and I it, have him. Oh, but he's number one in my heart. Oh, for sure. And I hope he dominates, and he will dominate in real football because he's uh, fantastic. I have him at number five. I have him the highest. I actually think he has a good year. There is no chance that I draft him in any league that I'm in because he's being drafted at that position where he has to hit, yeah. and the variables are monumental. Uh, you're talking about a player who has averaged 166 targets going all the way back to 2015. I can't get him there. He's a 140 target guy, even with a, a faster pace of play. And so could he dominate for Arizona with a faster pace of play, uh, higher you know, scoring offense potentially? Yes. But could he be nowhere near the value that you have to draft him at? Absolutely. The, per, the You know, when we're just trying to make the highest odd predictable choice, it's You're too, much, too else. much risk for me with Hopkins at that cost. <laughs> Obviously, he's going to be good in general, but it's will he pay off if you draft him? All right, we're starting to get into some uh, bigger question marks now. DJ Moore at number nine. Mike's got him up at seven. Jason at 10. I have him at 12. DJ Moore last year finished as the wide receiver 18. DJ Moore was the wide receiver 10 before he went out at the beginning of a game with a concussion and then missed the next week. Like DJ Moore was actually pretty great. Like he was averaging six receptions and 84 yards. And this was from Kyle Allen, who had the 35th best passer rating in the league. 35th. Now he gets Teddy Best. Best. Yes, thank yeah. you. Now Good he job, gets, Kyle. Look, Teddy Bridgewater last year was 11th in passer rating. We know that he's accurate. We know that he can uh uh, hit a player in stride. So, like, to me, it's DJ Moore is, uh, he's an athletic freak, but 10th in targets last year. Like, he is a focal point of this offense. And if he can get someone who is more accurate and actually like, hitting him in stride more often, I really think that DJ Moore can be great. And he was the wide receiver 10 in half point PPR, like I said, before going out. And that's only scoring four touchdowns. Yeah, I, I was going to say, DJ Moore's narrative here is really if, though. You know, as opposed to, like, Kenny Galladay overcame the Blau experience, and who who was the other? They had multiple non-Stafford quarterbacks last year. I can't remember the other guy's name. But get, Galladay kind of overcame that, still had the fantasy finish that was strong. Last year, DJ Moore ended up as the wide receiver 18. We haven't projected higher than that uh, by a by a wide margin. It's It's – noticing the touchdown totals were down. It's if Teddy Bridgewater is is going to be a big improvement. It's if Matt Rule is able to use DJ Moore in the same capacity with the target share. Last year, 135 targets. Does that go up with Teddy Bridgewater? No doubt of the talent. More questions around DJ Moore than other wide receivers because of those variables. New quarterback, new head coach, tough division. Uh, is DJ Moore going to be the centerpiece? Robbie Anderson also coming in. Yeah, this this is there are variables here, and we just talked about DeAndre Hopkins. Both these guys have massive variables, different schemes, different quarterbacks. One of them you have to draft as the fourth wide receiver. One of them as the fifteenth wide receiver. And obviously, Hopkins has a, a a longer history. He's done it. That's that's why he's being drafted there. But the value is more with more because uh, I mean, look. Here, what do we know Whoa. about what do we know about Carolina? Since we since there's a lot we don't know, we know their defense is going to be terrible. Yes, uh, we know that DJ Moore is an athletic freak. Yeah, we also know that he pretty much dominated in the games that he played in. So if he takes another step forward in that third year with an offensive system that's that's coming in, uh, you know, Teddy Bridgewater. How was Michael Thomas when Teddy Bridgewater was the quarterback? Pretty he, he was, good. He was fine. Um, so I, we know he can support someone, and I think that DJ Moore's role close to the line of scrimmage, a lot of screen games, they manufacture touches for him because he's so fast. I think the ADP is the big key here. I mean, you're not if, if you're getting him at between wide receiver 12 and 15, you're not taking the kind of risk that you would with someone else. I, I am kind of, you know, last year it was all, is Curtis Samuel or DJ Moore? Which guy's going to be the difference maker? We've already illustrated how bad the quarterback was. 35th best passer yes. rating. That affects somebody like Curtis Samuel as well, Look, and the gap is is just so immense. I mean, Curtis Samuel's a f uh, undrafted 14th yes. round guy. DJ Moore is a fourth round, early fourth pick. Curtis Samuel is an excellent post hype sleeper. Like he was he was open. He just 
the, for some reason they decided last year, Curtis Samuel, you're going to go out and you just run fly routes. You run run an iron down the field, and we'll see we'll see if Kyle Allen can get you this time. Oh, shucks, no, he missed again. <laughs> <laughs> well, but we'll try it on the next play. Yeah, so I I think it will be interesting to watch DJ Moore. I, Carolina in general, like you talk about question mark teams and what you're what you're going to get out of it. I'll be watching them closely. I mean, camp's going to be interesting. They have a running back that catches the ball over a hundred times, you know. And you mix in Samuel, you mix in Robbie Anderson, and then you still have to get DJ Moore volume. I think we all agree if DJ Moore doesn't have volume. In this offense, oh, yeah. no, it's going to be a gets, huge problem for the upside. Yeah, I I completely agree with that because DJ Moore is a he's a slot wide receiver. He has to have volume. And coming in at number ten is another one that is a volume type yeah. of player. Robert Woods makes the top ten. Oh, this is the respect that we've been just searching for, yeah, Robert, for his entire career. Mr. Woods, I hope you hear this. Uh, we have you as a top ten That's fantasy right. wide receiver. That's right. Welcome, uh, welcome into the top ten and. Game respect game. Go ahead and come on the show anytime you'd like. <laughs> Last year was a incredible. Only two touchdowns for Robert Woods. This is bizarre. He's being uh, 90 receptions, 1,100 yards, two touchdowns. His back half of the year pace, take it for what you will, 180 target pace, 120 reception pace, hundred or uh, 1,500 yards. I mean, that is a dominant. I, look, I respect him, but I'm not going to give him 1,500 no. yards. No, and that's not really his MO. I mean, if, if you're in a PPR league, people have asked this question a lot. I am 100% comfortable with Robert Woods as my wide receiver one in a in PPR, a PPR sure. league. He is going to get the rock a lot. Him and Cooper Cup, they are the pass catchers on the outside. They're going to have the opportunities. And, uh, you know, whether they go 12 personnel more, whether they use the tight end more, doesn't really matter to me. Robert Woods is the linchpin of the passing offense, the passing offense that throws the ball more than anybody in football. And what really just undermined his whole season was just the total touchdowns. And two is just, you know, maybe he's a five or six guy, but two is just outlandish. Well, and that's what he is. I mean, he's, I remember a game early in the season where he just, completely missed a toe tap in the end zone and it, he's he's a five or six touchdown guy but he's consistent he gets the ball he is uh, you know I made this argument last year for him and it seemed uh, poor in the very beginning when Cooper Cup got off to a, a strong start but I believe he is the first read he is the first target in this offense and Cooper Cup is better around the end zone but if you just want the consistency from fantasy production knowing he's on the field you know you saw at the end of last season when Cup and Cooks were kind of split in time in the snap percentages 60 in the 60 percent range Robert Woods doesn't leave the field Robert Woods is always out there is always the number one read for a great offense uh, Sean McVay, we you know we we've put our trust in him as fantasy uh, you know players. So Robert Woods is just phenomenal. And and if the touchdowns happen to come up, if he gets eight, if Robert Woods gets eight touchdowns, he's a guaranteed top ten wide receiver. He's basically been a top you know twelve wide receiver for uh, you know a, his pace. The the previous two seasons was great, uh, and he's cheap. Nobody want he is not flashy. You know the. Cup and Woods both are as unflashy a wide receiver core as it gets, and they're phenomenal in both real life and fantasy. And to be clear, we have him ranked by consensus at 10. That does not mean you draft him at oh, 10. Oh, no, you take that value. He is currently the wide receiver 17, but feels very safe. You know, when you think think about the types of wide receivers we've talked about today, some are in that boom-bust category. Robert Woods is not going to lose you a week. He might not win you a week, but he's going to be a stabilizing force for your your fantasy roster. Well, and you look at the wide receiver 17 finish. So two years ago, he was a top 10 fantasy wide receiver at the end of the year, and the only difference, uh, you know, a couple of yards, but it was the four touchdowns. If, if Robert Woods simply hit his regular five to six touchdowns, he would have been a wide receiver one again. Yeah, and and – this is why look 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 at these players right Robert Woods uh, fourth round pick DJ Moore basically a fourth round pick he's at the 312 you've got Amari Cooper fourth round pick the, this is why I was talking about on on last episode when we were talking about the running backs 11 through 20 with these big question mark guys the the uh, David Johnson and uh, Todd Gurley Chris Carson those players they're all going in the same round as guys we have as our top in our top ten at wide receiver. 
So get the top 10 running backs and then the top 10 wide receivers. Mm -hmm. All right, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode of the podcast. I encourage you to check out ultimatedraftkit.com if you're if you're in that mode right now, or getting if you're ready just, for the season. If or you if just want to win at fantasy football. E either way. Either yeah. way. The drafts are coming. We got it one month from the season. I cannot wait to – what do we get? Uh, Sean McVay, mask Sean McVay tonight? Yeah. We, well, yeah. Shield. Face shield. Kind of sounds a little bit like uh, – John Gruden. You notice that? Oh, big time. If I were McVay, I'd have the face shield as well. Too handsome to oh, hide behind right. the mask. All oh, right. We'll catch you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. Ballers.